I'm Rebecca Cloak. Um, I'm head of program delivery in the place shaping team at Westminster. Um, Lauren, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Lauren Shevels. I'm a place shaping officer and I work closely with Jasney and Rebecca. Um, I'm the, the program lead for Greening Westminster and I'm working closely with Rebecca. Um, so um, the, uh, the funding programme Greening Westminster uh, has been uh, running for a number of years. It was previously known as the Open Spaces Greener Places programme, um, which you may have heard of. Um, but this last year, uh, it's undergone a review um, and it now supports the Council's Fairer Westminster priority to uh, strengthen the role of the voluntary sector and community groups in leading the green transformation of our neighbourhoods. So the, the programme still retains its three key priorities, which are to improve and increase the quantity of green assets across the city, uh, the quality of our open spaces and green infrastructure, and the impact um, of our green assets, delivering a range of benefits to individuals, communities, and the environment. Uh, but in addition to those original three priorities, we are now supporting a partnership approach uh, and a more community uh, supporting more community focused projects. Next slide, please. So uh, this is a map of the city and it shows the 19 projects that have previously been supported by the programme, um, as you can see, spread across the city. Um, it includes a, a real range of different types of projects um, from uh, installing a water fountain in a park, a public park, um, to creating wildflower meadows, planting for pollinators, um, installing outdoor gym equipment. Um, there's quite a variety of things that it's funded in the past. Um, next slide, please. I'm just going to focus on giving you examples of three different projects to give a sense of the types of things that uh, this uh, fund is, is able to fund. Um, and from three different sort of sectors. Um, so the first one is an internal um, uh, application, which by that we mean uh, a team uh, separately to the play shaping team at Westminster, um, who were delivering um, uh, allotment space at Lytton Green uh, alongside the community. The uh, the middle one that you see there is at St John's Church uh, in Kensal Rise and with an application from uh, a member of the community. And on the right hand side, uh, George's Park, which is just off Baker Street, um, was delivered um, through a business improvement district. So three different types. So I'll just quickly talk about uh, each one of those. So the Listen Green uh, Estate Community Allotments. Um, the, it was uh, run through the Church Street Regeneration Programme um, in the, the Church Street area of Westminster, secured funding in, in 2021 uh, to revitalise the pocket parks of the Listener Green Estate in Church Street as part of uh, a, a wider sort of regeneration project that's going on there. Um, so council officers worked with community delivery partners Groundwork London and also Hammersmith Community Gardeners Association to help deliver the project. Um, it was focused on connecting the estate gardens and uh, providing ecological improvements and uh, really encouraged um, resident engagement with, with through community planting workshops that were held. Uh, so to give you a sense, that total project value was £66,640 and it had a programme grant um, uh, given to it from this programme of £50,000, which is the, the top most uh, grant awarded um, through the program. Next slide, please. So this gives an example of the church grounds um, around St. John's Church in Kensal Green, uh, just off the Harrow Road. So um, this was implemented um, as a phase to the greening strategy of, of the, the grounds, uh, community grounds around the church, which are open to the public uh, at all times. And it included uh, transforming an unused tarmac yard space into a new community green space. Um, it saw installation of a, a mixed species plant beds. Um, it increased biodiversity uh, for, the, for the pollinators uh, in the area uh, and included two beehives. Um, it saw six new benches uh, being provided um, for everybody to enjoy the, the peace and tranquility that was, that was created. And um, 
and yew tree um, hedges uh, around the edge of the site, uh, which also is helping to uh, combat air pollution to a certain extent from the road. So the project value there was 62,000 and had a program grant of 32,000. Um, so the remaining uh, money was, was from other sources, partnership funding. Next slide, please. So this example, George's Park, uh, a parklet created just off Baker Street um, and was uh, delivered through uh, the business improvement district in the area. Um, as it says here, much uh, a new public space um, created uh, new greening uh, in the area, which was uh, much needed uh, and for workers and residents to enjoy uh, during their breaks. It transformed an unused and unloved space into a parklet and um, it's an excellent example of shared vision um, successfully delivered through collaborative partnerships. So this project was a total value of £33,000 and had a programme grant from this programme of £15,500, just to give you a sense. Um, so Lauren's now going to uh, talk through some of the policy that's influenced um, the New Look uh, programme. Yeah, so as Rebecca mentioned, this uh, programme has gotten under a refresh um, and we wanted to align um, Greening Westminster with some of the current policy that's that's available. Um, so basically, uh, following uh, Westminster, the Westminster City Council declaring a climate emergency, um, the Climate Action Plan was, was brought out. Um, and focuses on five key themes of which um, Greening Westminster focuses primarily on the green and resilient city, which looks at maintaining and protecting council trees and increasing tree canopy cover. It also looks to inspire residents, communities and organisations to increase tree planting. It also supports greening within public realm schemes to help enhance carbon sinks and provide climate resilience. And it also engages and enables residents and organizations to increase their resilience um, of local climate impact. So we also uh, referred to the city plan, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, the city plan um, highlights deficiencies across the borough. So we focused on open space deficiency as well as wildlife deficiency as this program looks to um, enhance nature, not only for people, but also, of course, for biodiversity and our natural environment. Um, and then following the launch of the Fairer Westminster strategy, which was brought out in October last year, and also includes kind of five key themes. Um, one of the prominent themes is fairer environment. We also realigned the program to, um, to focus on some of that. So it involved us looking and referring to the environmental justice measure, which I'll get on to later. And also it's refocused the programme so that we look at engaging with communities and residents on greening projects across the city. And this is a real key commitment from, from the Labour administration here in Westminster. So I mentioned already the environmental justice measure tool. Um, this is a new data tool, which we can share a link to in the chat. Um, it highlights the differences in how people are impacted by their environment and climate change, and it shows the distribution of green sustainable resources and spaces across the city. The idea of the environmental justice measure tool is to give residents the information they need to act and influence and also to reduce negative environmental impacts. Um, and it's also to inform the council about how and where we invest in the local environment. And why is this important for Greening Westminster? It's, um, it's a, a tool that we can use to raise awareness um, and it also will help us focus resources where they are most needed. So this is just a kind of a running animation to show you how the different indicators, I think maybe there are between eight and nine different indicators which inform the overall environmental justice measure. So things like flood risk, heat risk, um, percentage of people commuting by public transport or cycling and walking, and air quality, also including things like energy performance certificates as well. And um, so quite comprehensive. And this was something that was developed by our innovation and change uh, team here at West, in-house at Westminster. So this is just an idea to give you 
to kind of whet your appetite for what sort of projects we hope to deliver. It might be community gardening, food growing, edible classrooms, tree planting, adventure playgrounds, or even greening of churchyards as Rebecca's talked through. So I'm now gonna pass back to Rebecca so she can talk about who can apply. Yeah, a few more details now about the, uh, the funding and the process um, to go through. So firstly, uh, who can apply? The programme's open to any organisation um, that wishes, wishes to improve or increase the quantity, quality or impact of green assets across the city. The funding programme uh, this time will be accepting two different types of applicants, uh, which Lauren will talk about in more detail in a bit, but they are greening Westminster professional. This is applicants uh, who would fall into the category of, for example, being business improvement districts, perhaps private businesses, organisations, and also including in that category other internal Westminster City Council teams. And then there's the Greening Westminster Communities uh, stream of the programme, which will be encouraging applications from grassroots organisations and community groups. Next slide, please. So uh, there are some key must-haves um, for us to be able to consider an application. Um, and uh, we will be um, prioritizing, um, sorry, before we get to that, I think that's the next slide. I think this, we'll be prioritizing uh, projects that focus on um, community greening projects that serve and strengthen uh, local communities that focus on the need outlined in the environmental justice measure as Lauren's just talked through that will have a clear uh, maintenance and management strategy um, to ensure the longevity of the project. And also that can demonstrate additional support from volunteer time and community buy-in. Next slide. And here are the must haves. So whilst we will be uh, keen to see projects that prioritize those things in the last slide, every project uh, must be a site that's within Westminster. Um, be publicly accessible. It must be a project that aims to complete within one year of receiving the uh, funding. So therefore is likely to be, you know, fairly small scale in, in size or um, a project that's already sort of underway. Um, and the project's uh, environmental impact uh, has been considered and appropriate measures are in place to reduce the carbon footprint and ensure climate resilience. Now that on that last point, um, we appreciate that that might not be immediately obvious. Um, so we're also giving the option uh, to speak with a council officer about measures that you might consider for your project um, to ensure that that's sort of taken into account. Lauren. Yeah, so I'm going to do a very quick overview of what that looks like in the next kind of coming months and over the next year in terms of project delivery. So um, the expression of interest opened at the start of March and as such, we're running these online Q and A's to answer any questions about the application process or even the uh, kind of the bigger picture of, of your project. Um, the application period closes at the end of April and the start of May. So you must submit an expression of interest because that is key to determining which funding stream you fall into and that closes on the 28th of April and then the subsequent full submission is the 2nd of May. And then we will be announcing successful projects at the start of June um, and as Rebecca said we expect those projects to conclude within a year. So I'm going to take you through the application process and the sort of support that you can expect from Westminster in developing your proposal. So step one is submitting an expression of interest. And you can do so via the Greening Westminster website. So under the web page, there's a big button that says uh, submit expression of interest. And then it's quite a straightforward form to submit. So what we need to know about you and your organisation is your name, address, legal status. Um, and then this is also an opportunity to uh, describe your organisation and tell us which funding stream you think you fall into. And then we'll do an internal kind of review of that as well. And then outlining your organisation and project concept. Um, it's very light touch. Um, and it's also absolutely fine to say that it's just a concept, you know, we're not expecting um, you to have all of the answers in the expression of interest step of the application. 
Um, and then all applications are encouraged to bring um, match funding, as we've seen from the three examples that Rebecca presented. Um, a lot of the potential was unlocked in partnership funding. Um, and in the case of Gress Greening Westminster Professional Stream, we're expecting 20% match funding for the overall project sum. The second part of that expression of interest form is telling us about your project more specifically. Um, and just to make you aware, the answer to all of these questions must be yes to be eligible for funding. So is your project publicly accessible? Yes. Does your project deliver physical improvements? Yes. Will your project be delivered in Westminster? Yes. And have you considered the environmental impact of your project? Yes. If you answer no, you'll be offered um, support from Westminster City Council to do so. And then once your funding stream has been determined, you'll receive one of two um, application forms which you need to submit by the 2nd of May. Um, and you're very welcome to submit um, supporting materials such as photographs of the site and any plans that you might have developed. Um, and yeah, as I said, it's, it's a very straightforward form that you just submit to the Greening Westminster at westminster.gov.uk website uh, email address. And then we want to make sure that this is accessible to all community groups, um, as well as uh, bids and private entities, neighbourhood forums and uh, Westminster projects. So we, the Play Shaping team, will be helping you to prepare your application um, and we're trying to make this supportive and as accessible as possible. So we're running a series of engagement events around this. So the first of those engagement events are these online introductions of which we're we're taking part of now so you're you'll have the option um the opportunity to ask questions at the end of this presentation about the application process or your project we're also running a greening westminster workshop and this will be run at city hall and is an in-person event run by the play shaping team um where we're inviting in-house expertise to come and give advice on your project um We'll have members from our highways, um, highways team, communities team, um, and even our arboriculturalists um, from the trees team. Um, what that looks like in terms of the afternoon. So we've scheduled it for Thursday, the 30th of March, and we're imminently setting up an Eventbrite page from our website. Um, it, we're running it for two hours and it will be split into kind of three key sections. So we'll be setting the scene in the first half an hour. We'll then be hearing from expert voices in the second half an hour. And then for the last hour of the workshop, we'll break out into focus tables where um, potential applicants are welcome to join the, the in the in-house experts and ask specific questions on developing their proposal. Um, then as part of um, making this program more accessible to community groups, we are offering one-to-one -one feedback sessions on your proposals. Um, of course, if you're a, pr a private or professional entity, um, we're always available via email inquiry or over the phone. Um, but again, the focus on this is really supporting community groups who perhaps don't feel they have the, you know, the, the skills or the capacity to, to deliver proposals. And then the final, the final stage of that is, is submitting. Um, and then I just wanted to talk very briefly about project delivery and what's expected if you are successful in gaining funding. So as I mentioned, successful projects will be announced at the start of June, and that involves a project kickoff meeting. And then projects conclude within 12 months of starting, so June 2024. And if you are part of the uh, professional, uh, the Greening Westminster professional funding stream, this, this top blue bar, you'll be offered a Westminster City Council project sponsor. So that is an individual officer who will be uh, responsible for providing project support in the form of emails, but also um, they'll, be, they'll be acting as financial gatekeeper and they'll be issuing purchase orders and paying your invoices for your contractors. Um, you'll have a six month check in with that project sponsor and then an end of year program review as well. 
And then for the community, um, the Green Westminster community stream, you will be assigned a community delivery partner, and this will be a more intensive um, method of support throughout the year. We're offering a number of um, support sessions, which could take the form. It's not, it's not all of these, but it could be a selection of these, you know, uh, site appraisal, uh, community workshops. Um, again, you'll have a financial update and, and progress meeting halfway through. We'll also include capacity building for volunteers and staff to ensure the longevity of these projects, and then a series of handover workshops, as well as an end of programme review and project launch. So just to recap before we um, finish the presentation section of this online Q&A, we've got the Greening Westminster Workshop, which is at City Hall, 64 Victoria Street on Thursday, the 30th of March. We've got the expression of interest deadline, which is the 28th of April at midday. And then we have the full application submission, which is a deadline of the 2nd of May. So we've made that the Tuesday after the first bank holiday weekend in May at 9am.